Hello, Familia. This is Matthew chapter 12. Glory be to God. At that time, Jesus passed through the grain fields on the day of Shabbat. His disciples were hungry and began to pick and eat some heads of grain. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the day of Shabbat. He said to them, Haven't you read what David did when he and those who were with him were hungry? How he entered the house of God, and they ate the sacred bread, which is not lawful for him or for those with him to eat, but only for the priests. Or haven't you read in the law that on the day of Shabbat, the priests in the temple violate the day of Shabbat and are innocent? But I tell you that something greater than the temple is here. If you had known what this means, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, that's in Hosea chapter 6, verse 6, you would not have condemned the innocent. For the Son of Man is the Lord of the day of Shabbat. Moving on from there, he entered their synagogue. There he saw a man who had a paralyzed hand, and in order to accuse him, they asked him, Is it lawful to heal on the day of Shabbat? But he said to them, What man among you, if he had a sheep that fell into a pit on the day of Shabbat, wouldn't take hold of it and lift it out? A man is worth far more than a sheep, so it is lawful to do what is good on the day of Shabbat. Then he told the man, Stretch out your hand. So he stretched it out, and it was restored, as good as the other. Glory be to God. But the Pharisees went out and plotted against him, how they might destroy him. When Jesus became aware of this, he withdrew from there. Huge crowds followed him, and he healed them all. He warned them not to make him known, so that what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Here is my servant whom I have chosen my beloved in whom my soul delights. I will put my spirit on him and he will proclaim justice to the nations. He will not argue or shout and no one will hear his voice in the streets. He will not break a bruised reed. He will not put out a smoldering wick until he has led justice to victory. The nations will put their hope in his name. Glory be to God. That is in Isaiah chapter 42, 1 through 4. Then a demon possessed man who was blind and unable to speak was brought to him. He healed him so that the man could both speak and see. All the crowds were astounded and said, Perhaps this is the son of David. When the Pharisees heard this, they said, The man drives out demons only by Beelzebul, the ruler of demons. Knowing their thoughts, he told them, Every kingdom divided against itself is headed for destruction, and no city or house divided against itself will stand. If Satan drives out Satan, he is divided against himself. How then will his kingdom stand? And if I drive out demons by Beelzebul, who is it your sons drive them out by? For this reason, they will be your judges. If I drive out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come to you. How can someone enter a strong man's house and steal his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man? Then he can rob his house. Anyone who is not with me is against me, and anyone who does not gather with me scatters. Because of this, I tell you, people will be forgiven every sin and blasphemy, but the blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. Whoever speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But whoever speaks against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven him. Whoop. <laughs> Forgive me, Familia. <laughs> Hello. Forgive me. It will not be forgiven him, either in this age or the one to come. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruit. Brood of vipers, how can you speak good things when you are evil? For the mouth speaks from the overflow of the heart. A good man produces good things from his storeroom of good, and an evil man produces evil things from his storeroom of evil. I tell you that on the day of judgment, people will have to account for every careless word they speak. For by your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees said to him, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. 
But he answered them, An evil and adulterous generation demands a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was in the belly of the huge fish three days and three nights, so the Son of Man will be in the heart of the earth three days and three nights. The men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, because they repented at Jonah's proclamation. And look, something greater than Jonah is here. Glory be to God. The Queen of the South will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, because <laughs> almost because she came from the end of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And look. Something greater than Solomon is here. When an unclean spirit comes out of a man, it roams through waterless places looking for rest, but does not find any. Then it says, I'll go back to my house that I came from, and returning, it finds the house vacant, swept, and put in order. Then off it goes and brings with it seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they enter and settle down there. As a result, that man's last condition is worse than the first. That's how it will also be with this evil generation. He was still speaking to the crowds when suddenly his mother and brothers were standing outside, wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside, wanting to speak to you. But he replied to the one who told him, who is my mother and who are my brothers? And stretching out his hand towards his disciples, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven, that person is my brother and sister and mother. Oh, dear Lord, Heavenly Father, help us to do thy will. In the mighty name of Jesus, unite thy people, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I know that there is a minimum of 7,000, Father God, that have not bowed, bowed down to ball. In the mighty name of Jesus, unite us, Father God, and bring us together in the mighty name of Jesus. And may we continue to do the will of you, our Father in heaven. Reunite brothers and sisters of thy Son, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah and amen. Life familiar.